So welcome back students, we are basically discussing several mechanistically important transformations and we are saying that if you are quite familiar with the mechanism of some of the transformation, uh, then sometimes it is uh, very easy to formulate a retrocentric pathway and basically we are discussing some unusual transformation and its mechanism and those uh, mechanism based transformations are very important for your exam purpose also. Then the, so, we are giving a highlight or giving a heading that transformation as well as mechanism based strategies. Now, the target molecule which I am now given is something like this and I say the starting material will be also given to you, the starting material will also given to you. The epoxide stereochemistry was not that relevant, but the problem where from I have taken it, it gives the stereochemistry. Now, if you see the target and the starting material, you will find that something is uh, definitely can be doable and I said that okay, we are having a benzyl, benzyl group here CH2, CH2 this epoxide has to be cut down or epoxide has to be generated. So, if some nucleophile you add it here that will basically give you this. So, what you can think about that if you have this epoxide you can use 1, 2, 3, 4 this CH 2 CH 2 minus. So, if something like this CH 2 CH 2 minus you can have in your lab or maybe this compound is basically nothing will basically equivalent to triple bond CH 2 CH 2 X. It is basically a homopropagyl kind of bromide or alkyl anything. Now, I say we will be uh, will be giving you something else. I say no, I will be not giving you this compound, this is uh, not uh, not available uh, in the lab. So, why do not you take this particular compound? This is a basically a acetylene derivative. So, basically 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 1 butyne 1 2 3 4 1 butyne. Now, earlier this this particular if you are thinking of using this you said that this compound is having a x here x is basically a chloro or bromo and how the way you are planning to synthesis you are trying to convert this compound to corresponding lithium or magnesium species. So, it a negative charge generates here and you will be opening this epoxide that is fine, but you are basically overlooking in this carbon you are also having a acid yielding hydrogen that is extremely acidic. So, when you are trying to exposing this compound with base you might generate the lithiated salt of acetylide also and then this might also react with this thing. So, basically you are having a regiochemical issues. Now, if I say I am giving you 1 butyne <coughs> you say there is a 1 butyne if you use how it can give you the target molecule fine. First for first think about one butane I have given to you, you react with a base LDA. So, basically you will be generating the minus here. Now, this minus attacks the epoxide. So, what product you will be getting? You get the OH here CH 2. Now, this CH 2 will be having this alkyne. Okay. So, instead of a terminal acetylene you get a internal acetylene as a product, uh, then you are in doubt sir uh, your uh, target molecule is having a terminal acetylene you have generated a uh, internal acetylene. Okay. Do not worry just count the number of carbon this part is fine this part is fine so basically 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, number of carbon is absolutely same, 
now i am saying i am saying that can you think of some reaction so that this internal alkyne can be rearranged to a terminal alkyne means that i am saying that you just transfer this internal alkyne to a terminal end just by this and this so basically this internal alkyne has to travel two carbon extra from this part to this part so it is it uh, looking very interesting and particularly this reaction is possible and this reaction is particularly named as alkyne zipper reaction zipper reaction now in zip zip basically if you remember zip is basically the zip which you use normally you zip up zip down so you are having something like uh, this framework you are having some bottom and this bottom is going through this way so zip is opened up and zip is closed so now what is this zipping zipping means that you are opening and closing through this particular instrument or this particular link so once it comes this side the zip is open once it comes this side the zip is closed so we called zipping and unzipping now the same terminology was used in a reaction named as alkyne zipper reaction now for the detail mechanism you can refer to scenearchive.com but we will be also talking about the mechanism how this reaction takes place so i am saying you are having this alkyne this we are drawing the hydrogen here which seems to be extremely acidic so you are having alkyne ch2 ch3 now i am saying i will be giving this alkyne to a strong base the base name is kappa what is kappa kappa is basically 13 diaminopropen and you can use it with this uh, potassium salt 13 diaminopropen and potassium hydride you can use now initially this 13 diaminopropen is nh minus and h plus with this uh, things this is basically extremely basic it abstracts this acidic hydrogen of one of this alkyne now this alkyne is having a ch2 and this this methylene seems to be pretty acidic and this by this methylene once it's acidic what it does it basically abstracted by this base and it gives you a alkene kind of thing and this end when it gets the electron it abstracts this hydrogen of this 13 diaminopropen so initial step you are basically having this alkene is basically a alkene the remaining part are similar so now this part is becoming your this way now the, the same base remains here the same base will try to do the same thing again it will abstract this hydrogen again it try to put the minus again on this double bond to generate the alkyne and then this particular alkene central carbon will now take this proton sorry this 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 here this comes in entirely this way yeah so you basically this things will be now abstract the proton so now you are having this r two hydrogen one is the initial step one is the second step you will be getting here so the initial triple bond is here it's now zip to one carbon right through a alkene intermediate so triple bond now becoming two double bond of alkene and the left hand double bond is now becoming a single bond 
and the right hand double bond now becoming a triple bond through this hydrogen abstraction. So, basically this alkyne has shifted to one carbon right. Now, basically what we are what you are getting you are now getting hydrogen hydrogen hydrogen. So, this methylene comes in the left and this triple bond comes in the right. So, basically this alkyne is now zipping throughout this acyclic chain. The same thing basically operates again with this same same compound you want have this uh, N H 2 or this kappa and this N H minus. So, it again abstracts the proton the same mechanism does operate and eventually what will get you basically get R C H 2 this C H 2 comes here and then you get this alkyne at the extreme end. So, 2 methylene so, initial compound you are having 2 methylene at the right hand side and you have an internal alkyne. Now, these 2 methylene have shifted towards the R and the terminal alkyne sorry internal alkyne now moving to extreme right is basically the G par reaction. So, in retrosynthetic uh, terminology a G par reaction basically is something like this if you having a CH 2 N here you treat with potassium hydride and 1 3 diamino propen and it basically unzips like this N and at the extreme end you get this alkyne. So, a internal alkyne alkyne was transferred to a terminal alkyne. That is why we called it the alkyne internally has been zipped to a terminal position. Now, coming to our problem which was given to you. I said initially you have given this epoxide and I say you react with this epoxide for this compound. So, initially open up of this epoxide through a base like LDA will give this minus here this minus will attack to this and you basically will be getting this OH CH 2 CH 3. So, now here the scene is ready for the zipping. So, first K H and 1 3 di amino propen. Now, see the zipping will be taking place and it is a OBN you basically have 1 O H here. Now, see this C H 2 will be now linked to this C H 2. So, there will be C H 2 C H 2 and then we will be having a methyl. There will be another zip. So, I call this is as a first jeep there is a second jeep. So, jeep will be continued till the internal alkyne is converted to the terminal alkyne. So, B n O B n O now will give you the C H 2 C H 2 C H 2 this is having a C H 2 H. So, this C H 2 also now coming C H 2 C H 2 C H 2 yeah now the jeep will be stopped. So, jeep will be continued till there is a uh, no more methylene left in the ring the first jeep second jeep there is a n number of jeep possible and this jeep reaction is very useful in terms of synthetic uh, I mean synthetic potential. So, internal alkyne like this is often converted to a terminal alkyne terminal alkyne. And the terminal alkyne basically you can do different kind of reactions they can be easily converted to the corresponding acetylite you can uh, do whatever chemistry you want. So, this zipping is absolutely uh, absolutely very useful 
and that gives you a pretty uh, nice uh, nice uh, uh, synthetic useful reaction. So, next one we will try to give you a similar mechanism based strategies mechanism based strategies and the problem which was now given to you the target structure is having this this is the target structure when I say the I will be giving you the particular starting material I say the initial starting material which I gave it to you is having this carboxylic acid and then I also give you a compound like methyl acrylate. Now, you see closely the carbon network almost remain similar ok you have oxygen here carbon network remains similar you have a one starting material you have second starting material. So, it seems that somehow if this carbon you can link this particular alkylate for this, this methyl acrylate you get a two carbon thing one two this one two. Now, eventually initially you need to construct this ring with this help of this carboxylic acid oxygen. So, I will now draw this retro a little bit different way and I say if somehow it is possible for you to generate a radical here this radical can undergo reaction with this ethyl acrylate through simple radical radical coupling or radical olefin coupling. Now, this chemistry we have already explained to you earlier that how you can generate radical if x is bromo and iodo I said if you treat this compound with u 3 SNH and AIBN you can get a radical here ok. So, in particularly uh, redundant functionality we have talked it. So, now which I am saying that now we are almost close and I say if you have this compound you can easily generate this. Now, this is basically a you can think about a simple FGA through radical based reaction radical based reaction uh, this is kind of a FGI functional group interconversion. Now, so your starting material is there. Now, what you can think about? You have to introduce a iodo here and this oxygen also should be in a 1 2 position with the iodo. Now, if you try to do a iodonium ion with this olefin, you can form a iodonium ion, then you can visualize that this carboxylic acid can act as a nucleophile and to clear this iodonium ion to close this ring to give you a lactone and this iodine now comes here. So, this reaction is we also talked about is a iodo lactonization reaction. So, only thing is what we need to do we basically need to know the mechanism of this entire transformation. So, now sorry now start with the starting material which was given to you first iodine and sodium bicarbonate was used. So, initially iodine you basically get the iodonium ion fine and then as bicarbonate is there you having this O minus here. Now, this will instantly undergoes nucleophilic opening of this iodonium ion. So, what you will get you get this O and this I it could be iodolactonation could, could be bromolactonation whatever you can do it this is basically a iodo 
lactonization reaction. Now, I am saying this iodo compound can be easily clipped through bu 3 SNH AIBN. This heteronic bond cleavage is possible and what we are getting? We will basically get a radical here. Get a radical here, isn't it? Now, is this radical can easily be reacted as another starting material is giving you a ethyl acrylate. This radical usually reacts through to this double bond and you get a CH2, CH2, CO2 Me, you get a initial dot here, this radical. Now, this is this radical is definitely stabilized by the captivative effect of this CO2 Me group, CO2 Me group. Now, you are having solvent or Bu3 SNH which can abstract the hydrogen and then you basically get the final product. The final product structure was given to you CH2, CH2, CO2 Me. So, that basically closes your synthesis. So, which is this particular synthesis or uh, what are the things we have seen? We have seen that that a radical based carbon carbon bond forming reaction is very important bond forming reaction we have used it ok. And then also we use our earlier reaction the transformation iodo lactonization which you have used it. Now, similar kind of thing now I will be trying to explore a very simple problem. I say you have to make this compound starting from a this compound without using without using Me 2 C U L I or without using the Gilman's condition. Now, then you are thinking that ok this is a bit difficult how you can do it because 1 4 Gilman is the normal way you can use it I said ok do not get confused. The target was given as this one starting material was given this one. So, you need to think about something. So, I say is it possible mm -hmm. you say that ok sir you are making a cyclopropane kind of thing and then how you can keep this cyclopropane. Uh, so, now cyclopropane are basically as I said they are at uh, strain ring this is absolutely strain ring cyclopropane ring is absolutely strain and they often behave like a normal olefin they are more of a pi character than the usual sp3 hydrocarbon. So, I say if you can open this thing here then it is a absolutely possible. So, first your starting material was given here you do a simple Simon Smith reaction which is known to you CH 2 I 2 zinc copper couple right. So, basically what you get here we will explain in the next slide. So, first you get this compound do a Simon Smith reaction or even you can do a carbon addition. So, Simon Smith will basically get now the cyclopropanes are absolutely strained molecule and they often behave like a more of pi 
uh, more of pi olefinic and saturation. In principle, you can basically clip this compound with hydrogen palladium charcoal. Now, palladium charcoal, what it will give? It can cleave here as well as it can cleave here. So, we basically can get this compound, this compound as well as your ring might be extended. I mean, if you cleave this way also, that also you can get the corresponding seven member thing. You can get the seven member things also. So, uh, now as I said our DR molecule is this, actually there is a other way to clip this. Now, all of you know that sodium liquid ammonia is basically the barge condition, the barge condition. Now, barge condition will basically getting a single electron. Now, this single electron will try to clip this cyclopropane through a radical pathway. Now, if you see how this things will be, it basically clips this particular bond and will give a dot here a dot here. Okay. Now, I say the dot on this carbon is a, is basically stabilized through this captivative effect of particularly this carbonyl compound. So, it is the radical was somehow kind of stabilized, somehow kind of stabilized this is the main thing that is what now you can also have this radical cleavage here to get the cycloheptane heptan also. Now, I see if you have this radical which can clip from particularly this thing you get a CH 2 dot here. Now, sodium liquid ammonia will give you another electron to basically will give you this minus or even in this particular point you can now have a tertiary butanol which will now act as a proton acceptor and you get this methyl. Now, this thing this this particular radical which is now generated here this also can initially be a hydrogen and now this is absolutely stable if you have a this this carbon ion this also can be easily will give you the corresponding enolate which you now pretty well known. The step wise now this particular radical can again accept this another electron to give you the hydrogen. So, in this way you are having a electron. So, this way basically you can clip this uh, particular uh, cyclopropane and cyclopropanes are always strain intermediate they can be easily clipped. The only thing is the barge reduction mechanism you should be quite familiar of and it can be you can basically make both the molecules either this one as well as this one depending on the reaction condition and uh, if you have to make this one probably you can try using this without the Gilman. Gilman definitely you can do, but as I said if you if you try to avoid the Gilman you follow this pathway and this will give you a nice uh, access of this particular dimethyl thing. So, we will try to continue our uh, discussion on the mechanism based strategies and we will come back in the next uh, lecture till then goodbye.